I want to do a new twist to the non-constant growth stock that you see during this week. Uh, I have a lot of students that have issues, so I went ahead and uh, I'm going to try it a different way. And if you look over here, I try to do a, a picture representation, if you will, of a non-constant growing stock. Up to this point, if you were doing um, a preferred stock or a constant growing stock, you're only looking at one period of time. So if this is a constant growing stock, it's really simple. You just go, okay, well, it's D0, and here's D1, and I took D1, and I find it RS minus G, and if I divide the V1 by RS minus G, it gave me P0. Uh, really simple, because it's constantly growing stock. And if it was a um, a preferred stock, it's simple. It's just D forever, because the let's say it doesn't change, divided by RS, because there's no G, and that was P0. Now, the difficulty arises when you have a stock that's going to grow non-constant for a period of time. And if you take a look, it would make no sense to purchase or look for the, the value of a stock here, because you're saying, in essence, I want 15%, but they are going to give me 20%. Makes no sense. So I drew it out here. I said, let's pretend like we have a stock right now at D0 is paying a dollar and it's going to grow as a 20% over the next three periods and then go back to its constant growing rate of stock. So I kind of drew this representation, this picture. So as I'm doing this, kind of refer back to the picture. I'm going to go ahead and do it using Excel. Uh, so let me pull the Excel spreadsheet up, uh, get the pen off here. I'll go back to home. There, I've got the pen off here. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a look. Well, in order to figure out, we have to first find the dividends. And it's real simple. We just have to take this number here, the dollar, and grow it by 20%. So I'm going to just simply do it this way, equals $1. And I'm going to multiply it by 1 plus the 20%, which is just basically your time value of money. And I'm going to put a percent sign in. I can put 0 0.20, but I'll put the percent sign to making a difference. Hit return, so it gives me $1.20. And to keep it easy, I want to do all four of them. So I'm going to grab this handle here and just do all four of them. And now it's going to grow every one up except for this one. It grew at, I want it to grow at 8%, so I'm going to delete this one and simply do it this way. And just say it's this times... There's a couple ways I could have done that. Uh, plus 0 0.08 return and hit this. So now I have basically, I just multiplied each one by 20 and the last one by 8%. So now I have uh, D1, D2, D3, D4. That's all I have to do. Now the next step here is to figure out you know, you have a stock, and stock pays you two ways. One is dividends, and the other one is the fact that it has a capital gain. So I can kind of find out what the price would be right here. We refer to that sometimes as terminal value. And the way we do is terminal value is nothing more than this equation right here, except we're not going to use D1 to find P0. I'm going to use D4 to find P3. So all I have to do is simply do this. Equals D4 divided by the difference between RS and G. I'm going to close the brackets and hit return. So now in essence I have a terminal value if you will. Um, uh, so it's basically saying the stock right here is worth about 26.66 but with any of these calculations remember uh, as Ben Graham the fundamental uh, an, an analysis uh, teacher of Warren Buffett would always say it's, not, it's, it's about future benefits discount about it at a rate that's commensurate with its risk, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the PV, the present value. So, one last thing, step I got to do is this step right here. I actually received two payments. I got, I got a dividend here at D3, but also have a stock price. Unfortunately, no calculator Excel will allow me to put two numbers in at the same time, so I have to combine them. So at that last point before it goes constant, right here, I've had to combine them. So I'm going to go ahead and this one, and I'm going to add this one here. And I have yes, shifted way on out. Let's go back to this. Oh, I did this. Uh, there we go. Oh. Uh, let's do it this way. Uh, so I have a combined value. Now, in order to find out what the present value of the bond is, I just have to take each one of these cash flows and discount them back at that rate that's commensurate with its risk, which is 15%, using net present value. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and formulas and recently used and there's my net present value and I'm going to go ahead and grab the rate is 15 percent and value number one is of course dividend number one and value number two is dividend number two and value number three is going to be the combination of the two which is right here 
and I'll hit OK, and I got $20.80. Now, it's kind of convoluted, but I want to show you another way. I, I had mentioned earlier in the quarter that you should download that app, Easy Calculator, or go to FN Calculator. Let me show you how easy. Now that you've seen the math, and you can go back and watch the video again and go slow, you've seen the math on how to calculate a non-constant growing stock. And by the way, it doesn't have to be dividends. It could be free cash flow, and it could be using other ratios like uh, growth and weighted average cost of capital. There's a lot of ways we can do this. Same math. I'm going to go into my FN calculator. I already opened it up right here, and we said the dividend was one dollar. That was D zero, and we said the required rate of return was fifteen percent, and we gave a twenty percent growth rate for year one, a twenty great twenty percent growth rate for two, a twenty for three, and then finally for four we hit eight percent. And if I come down here and hit calculate, I hope I get my $20.80, and there we do. Uh, uh, calculator makes it really easy, because what the calculator is doing is what I just did with the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, the calculator is just going, well, let me go ahead and apply the growth to that initial dividend. Then let me find the terminal value and, and add these two together, and then simply find the net present value of those cash flows discounted back at 15%. So I hope this helps a little bit with the non-constant cash flow for this week.